The gentleman from New York, Mr. Santos, is recognized. I'd, I'd like to yield as much time as uh, he may consume, my colleague from Florida, Mr. Gates. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. I do not believe that the Long Island crew is acting in bad faith, just exceedingly bad judgment. And here's why. Since the beginning of this Congress, there's only two ways you get expelled. You get convicted of a crime or you participated in the Civil War. Neither apply to George Santos. And so I rise not to defend George Santos, whoever he is, but to defend the very precedent that my colleagues are willing to shatter. Now, let's speak to due process. Mr. Santos hasn't been convicted of anything, but we haven't even moved to expel the people who have. Mr. Bowman pled guilty to a misdemeanor for his little fire alarm stunt weeks ago. So like, while the Ethics Committee is marching to throw George Santos out of Congress, they take no action as to someone who actually pled guilty to a crime? What's that all about? And then there's all this talk about, well, he could have come and testified to the Ethics Committee, and he didn't. So he had his due process, but that belies the fact that he faces a trial and had Mr. Santos testified before the Ethics Committee, an argument could have been made that he waived any of his rights that he would have had at trial that any American would enjoy. So it was a, it was a procedural double bind that shouldn't be held against Mr. Santos as some sort of adverse inference. Let's also talk about this precedent. The fact pattern as to Mr. Santos is remarkably similar to the fact pattern of former Representative Duncan Hunter. Duncan Hunter used campaign money on girlfriends and trips and home improvements and all sorts of personal lavishes. He was indicted for those crimes and continued to serve in Congress. He pled guilty to a number of those crimes and continued to serve in Congress. He was in Congress for like an additional pay period after having pled guilty to the very same things that, were, that, that Mr. Santos has been indicted for. And so I think it's, it's persuasive to me that Mr. Higgins and Mr. Nell's two law enforcement officials with sterling reputations are here, not necessarily to defend Mr. Santos, but to defend this precedent and this due process that is being shattered. And I was struck when the author of this resolution said the quiet part out loud. He didn't try to shoehorn the expulsion of George Santos into some existing construct or precedent. He said, yep, we're making a whole new precedent. We're making whole new rules right now. But he defends that by saying that the new rules are better, that it's a higher standard. So we should just throw away everything that's happened from the first Congress to the 118th because the new precedent is more robust. The problem is it's a lower standard for due process without merit. Mr. Speaker, whatever Mr. Santos did with Botox or OnlyFans is far less concerning to me than the indictment against Senator Menendez, who's holding gold bars inscribed with Arabic on them from Egypt while he is still getting classified briefings today. But he's not getting thrown out of the Senate. He's getting classified briefings under indictment for bribery. But well, what, what, because Santos was, was buying Botox and only fans we got to throw him out? If George Santos is convicted, he ought to be expelled. But until then, it is an incredibly dangerous thing for people in Washington, D.C. to substitute their judgment for the judgment of voters. Winston Churchill said that, you know, in, in, uh, a, in a democracy, people get the government that they deserve. Well, the people of Mr. Santos's district elected him. And, like, this is not some district in rural Mississippi with, like, one newspaper. This is New York City. And George Santos rolls in there, wins, and you know what? It's between him and his voters, him and the justice system, and the fact that the Ethics Committee has done this incredible violation of precedent will do grave damage to this institution for many years to come because now there is no requirement of any conviction. There is a departure from the precedent from the Duncan Hunter matter and many others, and I, I fear what that uh, may indicate lies ahead for the future of due process in the House of Representatives. I yield back.